I would just have to say that at best, this is going to have to come away as a teachable moment of how not to handle something like this. And that's not to slam any individuals. I just feel that at some point, though, this is the case study in what you don't want to do. Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. The last time you and I talked at the beginning of October, you were starting to get the sense that things were brewing south of the border with USA Curling. And it all sort of hit a different level, of course, at the beginning of the month when we received this report. Um, and we had, according uh, to this investigation by former U.S. Attorney General Sally Yates um, releasing this this report at the beginning of October, like I said, uh, former NWSL, that's the National Women's Soccer League Commissioner Jeff Plush, uh, in this report was aware of abuse allegations against Portland Thorns coach Paul Riley, but did not do anything to prevent him from coaching in the league. And this report also said that Plush uh, did not respond to requests for an interview as a part of that investigation, which uncovered years of systemic emotional abuse and sexual misconduct call. Right. So since then, there have been a number of groups um, expressing a lot of concern and, of course, taking to social media about Plush's ability to lead USA Curling. Plush took over the job of USA in USA Curling back in 2020. And of course, he used to be the NWSL commissioner. Two weeks ago, USA Curling issued a statement saying they held their own investigation in the wake of the Yates report. So, so um, the board of directors of USA Curling got involved. And then after reviewing their investigation, they say, and I'm quoting here from the statement that they are confident in Jeff's ability to continue as an effective leader of the organization. Um, Colleen, we've reached out to USA Curling. Uh, they have declined an interview with us on the show this week. This week, I say this week, um, because uh, we're learning some new information tonight. Nothing confirmed at this point, but it sounds like perhaps uh, change might be imminent. And we are hearing some rumors that perhaps uh, Jeff Plush may be on his way out. Nothing confirmed at this hour, but change could be afoot. And when all of this started happening sort of early October, uh, it was trending on a Sunday on Twitter. And right. people say the only thing that trends on Sunday on Twitter is football. Um, and I think Felix Asselin had maybe the best, well, everybody had terrific tweets and social media, but uh, he said, uh, you know, what is it? Is, is USA Curling trying to one-up Hockey right. Canada in, you know, a lot of people are talking about this is just tone deaf in this day and age as well. Sure. The, the lack of the silence at this moment is not golden. It's not golden. And uh, so USA Curling declined an interview, but two people who have been on the front lines who accepted our interview requests to be on the show tonight. And we are grateful for that for some context south of the border, Monica Walker. Um, and Deb Martin, who we've had on the show before. Uh, it's wonderful to see both of you. And you would have just heard as I introduce this, we are getting rumors tonight, uh, a lot being said right now that perhaps there is some change unconfirmed at this point. It doesn't change the conversation, I don't think. So Monica, we'll start with you. Uh, like I said, you've been on the front lines. You've been very vocal about this, about Jeff Plush's ability to lead over to you about um, how we got here and how you're feeling tonight about how this is all unfolded. Yeah, I mean, I think what you just explained um, with the Yates report, it kind of sets the context for where we are now. Um, when that report came out, um, I personally expected USA Curling to act swiftly and um, make some changes in leadership, um, at least, you know, maybe a leave of absence, something temporary as the investigation kind of unrolled. but. Um, unfortunately, we didn't hear for, from USA Curling for, I think, 10 days. Um, and so that's very kind of disturbing and distressing um, for people who are part of USA Curling. We kind of expected action. We didn't see very much happen at all. Hmm. Deb, do you feel like the curling community was heard at all during this, especially when it became such a social media trending topic that something had to give in this case? 
Yeah, I think my initial reaction after sort of the dust settled and I began to process the report for myself and sort of take it all in, I, I found that it was sort of a dual response in that I felt a bit discarded um, by leadership. And I also felt a little bit dis uh, disappointed and also confused because my experience to that point up until then wasn't to believe that this would be something that would go ignored or would be sort of brushed aside the way that it was. So I was a little bit surprised and kind of caught off guard, to be honest. And then as things started to progress, what I started to realize is I had two separate reactions. One was disappointment, you know, disillusionment um, in the leadership within curling. But then on the other side of it, I was actually quite I felt validation from the way the community started to take this on and the demands that we, you know, that we as a collective, as a curling community were making for, you know, calls for transparency, calls for action and calls for accountability. So I think it was, it was sort of a mixed bag of emotions, but I was honestly surprised at the, I guess, the ineffective response because that, that wasn't what I had come to expect, to be and, honest. And just to that point, Deb, I, I, I've been astounded and, and I would probably use the term impressed by the way the curling community has come together. Monica, um, Deb just mentioned uh, some of those demands. You put out those demands. There they are. Can you walk us through them um, right now? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, because we didn't hear anything from USA Curling right away, um, we felt the need to craft the statement um, asking for the immediate removal of Jeff Plush in his role. Um, mostly because we were worried about um, the immediate effect on athlete safety at USA Curling. Um, I don't know how much people know about Safe Sport and how USA Curling interacts with that organization, but Jeff Plush and Eric Leeson, who's the uh, CFO at USA Curling, who was also at the NWSL, um, they both are the kind of primary points of contact for Safe Sport complaints at USA Curling to date. Um, so that was our reason behind asking for that removal. It really was with athlete safety in mind. Um, we also wanted to have USA Curling release the results of the investigation that they had conducted. Um, we felt that uh, we, we, in order to make a, a full decision, a comprehensive decision about um, plush in leadership, we really needed to have that information. And by withholding that from us, it, it led to an erosion of trust for most people with USA Curling. And sorry, go ahead. Yeah. What's the next move, Deb? I mean, for me, it comes down to accountability at this point, accountability. And the only way to get to accountability is through transparency. Um, I think that we're at a point now where if all of the, the initiatives that we've been talking about and undertaking, which is probably the only reason anyone even knows my name at this point, right, is, you know, kind of participating in some of those loftier aspirational ideas about changing the face of curling and creating a space that is more welcoming, inclusive and belonging. I don't think you can do that or say that you're an advocate for that and then subsequently close ranks, you know, draw the shutters and hide behind closed doors. I think the only way that this works is for full disclosure, full accountability. And I don't think you can repair the breach of trust unless and until that happens. So I'm hoping that the messages are getting through and that, you know, maybe cooler heads will prevail and that at some point people will actually live up to the say do alignment that I'm hoping so that what they've been saying actually is reflected in what they actually do. And that's my hope for how this turns out. Smart, Deb. Um, I, I've had a lot of conversations with people south of the border this week. The reverberations of this are far reaching and the tentacles of this are far reaching as well. And we could have done a whole that curling show on this because I know there are concerns that uh, the GNCC has concerns and that's a whole other thing we could get into. Um, I know we want to stay focused on on the plush situation and the safe sport tonight, Monica. Um, you mentioned Safe Sport. I've done a lot of investigating on Safe Sport. We've seen uh, Colleen mentioned it south of the border with the Hockey Canada Board and and trust in people's ability to lead. In America, it feels like there's been this groundswell of momentum in the curling world, and now this. And I'm hearing from people that this isn't their sport. This isn't the spirit of curling. This is not it. What damage is being done here by USA Curling not being accountable to listening to the people who want to grow the game? Yeah, I think it goes back to kind of what Deb was describing. Um, we're working hard to create an inclusive um, community and environment for curlers in the U.S. so that we can continue to grow the sport in our country. And 
unfortunately, the results of the eight report and, and the lack of um, action by USA Curling is really contradicting that and making that not possible. We're in a bit of, um, we're kind of stuck right now. It's hard to move forward and, and continue to build that community without, without change happening. Mm. How's the online petition going and have you approached the World Curling Federation? Uh, you know, you, you would think maybe they'd be getting involved in this as well. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, we had over a thousand signatures in a week um, on our petition, which is really encouraging that the word was getting out there and people were um, signing on. <clears throat> I think we're at over 1200 now. Um, I don't believe we've reached out to the WCF, but there are a lot of um, larger organizations that we could reach out to. And, and I think that may be, you know, next steps we consider if, if uh, change doesn't happen. Deb, we've been talking about these rumors we're hearing and that perhaps there might be change or resignations or, or whatever. And we'll, we'll obviously stay tuned on that. That to me just seems like a, a little bit of the story because it seems like there's a lot more at stake when you look mm -hmm. forward. Um, maybe um, just talk about moving forward, what you would like to see, even if there are resignations and changes, uh, this feels like maybe a reckoning point for there to be a chance to reevaluate the direction this is all going. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Devin, ever the coach, that's kind of like my my slant in the world. And I try to approach things from the perspective of what can you learn from this? And I would just have to say that at best, this is going to have to come away as a teachable moment of how not to handle something like this. And that's not to slam any individuals. I just feel that at some point, though, this is the case study in what you don't want to do. You don't want to leave a void that then allows conflict, uncertainty to have, you know, people within the community start to turn on one another because the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And I think, unfortunately, that void and what I will call an abdication of leadership to act swiftly and to hear and respond, you know, with, you know, I guess the quickness um, has left us a little bit tattered, I would say. There are probably fractures. I don't know if I would say it's irreparable damage, but I definitely have witnessed some some things fraying at the seams. And to your, to your earlier point, I don't think this is 100% just this issue. Unfortunately, we've got twin traumas <laughs> going on within USA Curling. And I think some of that has gotten conflated. And I think frustration with one led to, you know, sort of, people sort of joining in the fray and clanging the bell, maybe sometimes disingenuously. At the end of the day, the way I think we move forward is we re reconcile, we admit to what happened. And I have a term I always say when it comes to this type of work that we do, that when you mess up, you fess up. And once you fess up, then you can begin the process of reconciliation and moving into a, a better, you know, hopefully more aware future. Because if we don't learn something from this, then it's all for nothing, honestly. So that's my hope is that it's a lesson learned and that we know better and do better on the go forward. Well said from both of you. But it must be a sad day to see just how much, mm -hmm. I mean, even in Canada, we recognize the power of the U.S. And if we can get the curling community there alive and well and prosperous and thriving, it helps benefit the Canadian game and the world game. And it was doing all of that. So is mm -hmm. this such a giant, you know, it was a small step forward with the success on the ice. And now it's this giant leap back. I guess Devin already asked sort of how do you go forward now if change doesn't happen? Mm. Whew. Yeah. I hadn't even I hadn't even considered that possibility to be honest. Right. You're, 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 yeah, I mean, I'm expecting that at some point the community is going to demand better and I don't know what that looks like, but I'm hoping that USA curling will be the place where we can maybe seek, you know, reconciliation. Mm -hmm. I just feel I feel encouraged by the community response though because I am really it's become very clear that this is not the kind of culture we want to encourage within our sport. And that gives me so much hope. And it's the reason that I think I'm so in love with the sport. And to be honest, this has been kind of heartbreaking for people mm -hmm. who really enjoy this and look at this, you know, as an outlet and it's a community, you know, on so many levels, it's been kind of heartbreaking to see this happen. But I do feel like it's not beyond repair. I just think that the clock is ticking and that leaders need to lead and I'm hoping that servant leadership is what emerges here as opposed to power protection. Um, that's what I hope for the future. Mm -hmm. The community support is one thing, Monica, but when this made headlines and NPR and USA Today and so on, I mean, how big a deal was that to get not just social media involved, but mainstream media involved as well? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that was really impactful. I think uh, it lent credibility to what we were saying mm -hmm. for sure. And, and we definitely got a lot more um, reach with those outlets, of course. But but yeah, like what Deb is saying, I'm inspired by um, the outpouring of like response from USA curlers, the statements that curling clubs have put out there and unified mm -hmm. fronts that they've presented. That's encouraging to me because that means that people aren't invested enough in their sport to care, to see it better. And I think moving forward, you know, I'm hopeful that change happens and I'm excited for those groups to come together and really work on making USA Curling a better like organization for everybody. In a way, Deb, does this also undermine the whole safe sport movement? I mean, I just took the safe sport course, you know, and got that box checked off. And it's like we're all saying safe sport. But when something like this happens, are you going, well, they're just hollow words. Honestly, it's interesting that you said that. I just had a conversation not too long ago with some people in leadership, and I had said that it comes down to culture, always, 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 and that culture eats strategy for breakfast. So it doesn't matter how much safe sport training you do and how many you know bylaws and things you put out there, the culture actually has to be where the rubber meets the road. And a culture that will tolerate things like abuse or oppression of athletes or anything like that is a culture that is always going to need to be changed or corrected. And I don't think you can start talking about a conversation of inclusion until you make sure that the people that are in the community, athletes, you know, rec recreation all the way up to the elites need to feel safe participating in these communities. So I do think that it's a culture thing. I think it's great that we have um, guideposts like safe sport, you know, we have ways to quantify what it is we're trying to do, ways to evaluate it because what gets measured sometimes gets done. But I think the culture at the end of the day that holds people accountable is what's going to be the difference maker. And when we as a group don't tolerate things like this, that's the only way it's going to make a difference because leadership clearly can decide, you know, to kind of move on swiftly and think it's no big deal. We are the ones who are the culture creators who are then demanding accountability. So it, it sits with us, all of us, to create uh, that safe sport. You can see a lot of comments rolling in at the bottom, people thanking you for your work. Uh, I can tell you right now, we know right now that the USA Curling Athletes Council is having a meeting tonight. We don't know what's being discussed at this point, but uh, like I said, we're hearing a lot of rumi uh, rumors that change is coming. As you said, the clock is ticking, perhaps too late, but maybe this change is coming. Uh, my last question, uh, you two are out here. You're on the front lines. How are you? with all of this? How are you doing? Monica, Deb? Yeah, um, it's been a, an intense couple of weeks um, for everybody involved. And um, I personally, I'm exhausted. Um, it's been very emotional and up and down. I care a lot about USA Curling. I care a lot about athlete safety. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for something to change. Something has to give here. <laughs> Deb? I think Monica's being very modest. Um, I've witnessed on the backside of this um, a lot of people, including Monica, working very hard. You know, people with full time jobs and, you know, entire lives who have just carved out all the space possible to really demand better and do more. And we're just people, right? You know, this is about progress, not always perfection. And I personally, I think the emotional labor that it takes to do this kind of work. I, I am impressed that people have stuck with it as long as they can, but I do think there's a point where, you know, it's great to see other voices come into the fray just as the, the, the small group of people who were like fighting the good fight, right when you're, you're at the give up moment, you know, you get a letter from another club or from a large, you know, governing body or from a sponsor, and that gives you just enough fuel to keep pushing. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe I'm a little less exhausted because I don't feel like I've been out there in the front on this. And I was grateful that other voices were able to take the lead and that we have so many people singing from the same sheet music. But it is it's time for leaders to lead and to let those of us who are just volunteers get back to doing the things that light us up and fill us up. And this is an igniting event, but for all the wrong reasons, mm. in my opinion. Mm. Well, if, as you said, if you messed up, fessed up, you know, mm -hmm. or at least be honest and transparent yep. uh, because it yep. just, it doesn't smack past the old sniff test right now for a lot. 100%. Thank you so much for joining us. I, I, if I had a pen, I would have written you guys <laughs> so many wonderful motivational quotations through that. <laughs> Anyhow, we hope, 
we hope things get settled. Canada certainly went through their own mess with Hockey Canada. And uh, the silence there was deafening for a long time and the frustration. So oh. that, uh, we hear you. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving us an opportunity, as always, to share and talk more about it, because I think the more we talk about it, the clearer the story gets and the more context, the better. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks. It, it is a mutual feeling and uh, take care of yourselves. And uh, you are certainly making space for people to step into the into the spaces that you're talking to, uh, Deb and Monica. Thank you. And we will obviously be keeping a close eye on this and more to come, to be sure. So appreciate awesome. you. both. Thank you. Thanks.